Welcome to Win Souls TV. This is your host, Jeff Thomas, and today we are going to talk about our past. Now, one of the things, especially in our lives, especially in my life, I, you know, I'm going to speak for myself <laughs> right now, and I know that there are some people that can wholeheartedly relate to everything that is about to come out of my mouth. But every time that it's almost just like every time that we're about to move into like a specific place where the Lord is promoting us or we're about to move into a, a specific place of growth or something great happens in our life where the Lord is just sprinkling down his grace and allowing his magnificence uh, to just go everywhere in your life and he is um, bringing you in, into a place of prosperity or whatever or leading you in a specific direction here comes Satan. Here comes Satan. And he's reminding you of your past. He's reminding you of all of the things that you did to these specific people that you hurt. He was reminding you of all of the of the times that you cut corners in order to get where you are. But let me tell you something. We are not characterized by our past because we all make mistakes and we all have a beginning and one of the things that really frustrates me about Christianity uh, or I guess just the American way of Christianity is the fact that all of us go sit and then we go to church and then it's just kinda like oh yeah we're just gonna act all perfect and all good and we're just gonna sit here and we're gonna point fingers like I'm better than you simply because I've received Jesus Christ and this, that, and the other, and we go back home, and we watch the Super Bowl, and we watch uh, uh, Monday Night Football, and we don't, we don't even, you know, lift up our tongue in prayer, let alone crack and, op crack and open that Bible. But yet and still, we feel like we can just sit here and point fingers at what all of these other people have done in their lives, and all of the little mistakes that they are, are doing now. But none of us are perfect and we all have a past. And so instead of sitting here pointing your finger at other people and potentially being used as a conduit for Satan, how about we start speaking life into those individuals and reminding specific people of their true identity through Christ? Because once you know who you are in Christ, you begin to live that out. Once you believe who you are in Christ, then you begin to live, walk, talk, and act that out. But it's not just an act, it becomes a lifestyle. It's just, you know. So, with that said, you know, we are not characterized by our past. Our past is meant to use, or, or our past mistakes are meant to be used as a lesson for us in the future. It's just kind of like, okay, the Lord allowed me to fall in this specific place to gain the wisdom from it. He's teaching me something. Okay, I touch this oven. Oh, you know what? That burned. That hurt. I probably won't be touching that again. I put a skillet on it and then I cook my food. You know? But other than that, you know, I'm not touching that skillet again because I got burned. And it's the same thing in a lot of relationships. One thing that I that I've, you know, experienced myself and that I've seen in a lot of relationships is that uh, say it was a bad breakup and, and one party literally feels guilty. Well, the person that feels guilty also feels like that other person hasn't forgiven them. So a lot of the times the person that feels guilty has already apologized, but they can't get rid of that guilt or maybe they did something wrong and they can't get rid of that shame. And so when they are in close corners or close quarters with that individual that, that, um, that brought them to that level of shame or guilt it's just like I feel so uncomfortable I can't look this person in the eye and then on the flip side the other person feels uh, feels right almost like they feel vindicated for not forgiving that person for what they did and then also uh, 
by not forgiving, they have that level of resentment. So when they walk towards you, you know, they're cutting their eyes at you. You know, they're angry with you. They, you know, they, they're, they're doing all of these specific things to try and make your guilt heavier of a load for you to carry. You're already carrying the burden in your mind. And then now you see them and they're acting resentful towards you for the thing that you did. But let's let's understand and let's dissect that for a second. They are in that place because of their resentment. You have no control over trying to get somebody to forgive you. Ask for forgiveness, mean it genuinely. Forgive yourself, mean it genuinely. Ask the Lord to forgive you and mean it genuinely. After all of that, you can't do anything more and realize that anything that happens outside of that is beyond your control. So with that said, you move forward in the identity that the, that the Lord has for you. You see that person out there, you smile. You don't necessarily have to say, hey, every time you see them, but it's just kind of like, you know, hey, how you doing? And move, move on along about your business or smile and move on along about your business. But you just understand that you are not characterized by your past and it's not a necessity for you to walk like that. That is where Satan wants you. He wants you debil debilitated. He wants you to stay in that specific place so that you never ever begin to see yourself the way that the Lord sees you. Because when you see yourself the way the Lord sees you, you walk out of that. And, and it affects everybody in, your, in, in, in the room. The anointing that the Lord has put on you makes some people feel uncomfortable, especially if they are not believers. But guess what? You're not in charge of that. You're not in charge of that. You move the way that the Lord would have you move and understand that there is nothing in your past that can ever hold you back. All of us have a beginning and that person that is being resentful obviously has not realized that. And two, they have not been looking at themselves because then they will understand that they've made a mistake as well. And I've been on both sides of the spectrum, so I understand both of them, which is why I can speak about it. So I've been that person that has been resentful. I've been that person that literally was hoping, uh, cursing at the individual in my mind, just hoping that bad things was ha would happen to him. And then I've also been the individual that was literally you know, down in the dumps because of what I did to somebody. But guess what? The Lord had to teach me that lesson. Look, hey, what did you do, Jeff? Did you ask for forgiveness? Okay. Did you ask yourself for forgiveness? Okay. You asked me for forgiveness, right? Well, what, what else can you do? I've forgiven you. You ask them to forgive you. It's not, your, it's not your job to make them forgive you. They can't forgive you. They can't forgive you by anything that you do. They have to forgive you on their own. And then also, you ask yourself for forgiveness. So what is holding you back? You walk the walk that I have for you. Basically, he's saying you walk the walk that he has for you. And nothing else. That's it. Be unapologetically you. Or him through you. And don't worry about what anybody else thinks about it. Because the way that the Lord flows through you, he won't, he won't flow like that. And a lot of other people, because there's only one you and there's only one way that he can move through you or that he, you know, chooses to move through you because he gave you a specific identity. All of us. Right. There's a universal identity. And then there's one that is specifically catered toward you based off of the things that he would have you do for your ministry in him. So, hey, don't worry about the trash. Satan want to keep you there so that so that you will never be elevated. You will never be promoted. You will never move out of the things that he would have for you. I mean, I'm talking about the Lord, the, the things that the Lord would have for you, because guess what? If you're if you're if you're debilitated, if you're broken, if you're down in shame and if you're down and, uh, and sad, this, that and the other wondering about what that other person thinks of you. Guess what? You'll never you'll never. Um, reach that level of mindset that the Lord would have you in. And that's exactly what is, where Satan wants you. He wants you trapped mentally. So don't be afraid.
Don't be afraid. Put that smile on. Forgive. Ask for forgiveness. And move forward. Keep moving forward. Be blessed. Have a good one.